Did you also go to the midnight screening of the last Harry Potter movie? Did you get those? Because if you did, you're awesome. Hi, I'm Oliver and welcome to today's book discussion. So today I'm talking about An Abundance of Catherine's by John Green. Now, I have not read The Fault in Our Stars and I have to be honest with you. And I know that some of you will turn on me. I have no desire to read The Fault in Our Stars. Doesn't appeal to me at all. And I know that everyone is fangirling so bad on The Fault in Our Stars. No interest at all. I don't ever see myself reading it. Well, now that I've read this and this that I like, like I might give it a try one day because I, I liked John Green, like the way he wrote this book, but I mean, one day, like, like maybe in like 10 years. When I'm done reading everything I have to read right now, maybe I'll give it a try, but anyway. Sorry. <laughs> so why did I pick this book was very, like, two reasons. Uh, I was at Chapters buying some other books. And then, you know, when you're in line at the cash register, they always have those table right next to it, you know, just for a last minute push for you to buy them. And then I saw this and, you know, the title intrigued me. It's like an abundance of Catherine. That's weird. So, you know, you know, I picked it up, you know, and I started reading the back, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's cute, you know, <laughs> that's quirky. <laughs> and then it says, and an overweight Judge Judy loving best friend. His best friend, the best friend of the main character, loves Judge Judy. I'm in. I was like, you come with me, I'm going to bring you to the cash register, I'm going to pay for you, I'm going to bring you back home, I'm going to read it, I'm going to enjoy it. And as a matter of fact, I did. I enjoyed it. So, you know, it's the story of a guy who has been, who has fallen in love with 19 Catherine consecutively. All of those relationships has, have ended up in a breakup. All of those breakups have been initiated by the girl, so he's always been dumped. And now he's been dumped for the 19th time. And his life is not turning as he hoped it, it would because he's so smart, he's a prodigy, and he wanted to invent something or make something big with his life. But then again, why did he waste so much time falling in love or, you know, going out with girls if his real focus or real love was to do something that matters? That didn't make sense to me at all. You, if you're really focused on your studies, that you stay focused on your studies. What do you think will happen when you meet a girl at 14 years old? You're going to marry her and live with her for the rest of your life? No. So in the long run, that girl at 14 years old does not matter at all. Especially since you're so obsessed about finding, like making a new scientific discovery that's basically going to change the world. And really... Jean-Sebastien wants to say hi. Do you want to say hi to the camera? Yes, you do. So, um, so after the latest breakup, he and his best friend decide to go on a road trip, you know, deciding to open themselves to the chaos, to, you know, and see if anything comes up and, you know, get out of the comfort zone and just experience new things. So all in all, I found the book to be, you know, quaint and charming and full of quirks and entertaining and at times funny. And I found the behavior of all the characters to make sense. Like, uh, everything they did sort of, yeah, so they didn't do anything out of character. So they were well-defined and so the universe that was built made sense. And... Um, I know like the book is supposed to be a celebration of the theory of chaos or something, but I mean, some of the facts were kind of random and it kind of bugged me. But that's what I want to discuss today. Because this video, as all of my other videos, is not a review per se. If you want to see a proper review of An Abundance of Catherine by John Green, I invite to you to click on any of those links to go and watch other booktuber who did review of An Abundance of Catherine's. I'd rather talk and discuss the book. So, specific plot points, storylines, character development, the ending, what made sense, what didn't, what I liked, what I didn't. So from now on, for the rest of the video, it's going to be very spoiler heavy. So did any of you 
think that as well, that it was kind of random, like all random. Like, why did they stop in that town? That's fine. But why did they like, decide to remain in that town? That was, to me, um, like a convenient plot point. Like, okay, we're going to meet this girl who's going to bring her to her mother. Who's going to bring you to her mother. And then the mother, the mother's going to say, stay, I can pay you for a month. That doesn't happen in real life. <laughs> what the frack was that about? So, that kind of bugged me, but, you know, I, I just had to let it go because then the whole rest of the story is based on that plot point. So, I have... I mean, I still struggle with it a little bit, but you just have to accept it because otherwise a novel doesn't make sense at all. Um, I really like, well, the character of Colin, I liked him and I didn't like him. I liked the fact that he was not entirely likable and that he had his flaws. And I liked that he was very smart and unapologetically smart and seeking, you know, intellectual knowledge and all of that. That was great. Uh, but he was a bit of an asshole, and I was so glad when um, Hassan, fi Hassan finally gave him his comeuppance. I was like, oh, you tell him that he's a self-centered jerk. You just tell him. And you tell him that he's been wasting his life. And you tell him that he should just shut up, shut up, suck it up, and listen to your problem for once instead of only talking about his own problem. That was, it was such a satisfying moment of the novel. But um, I still found it weird that it had not come up before in the past. Because he's very needy and insecure and, yeah, I mean, really? They have to tell you that they love you every single second and every day, really? Well, I'm exaggerating, but you know how at one point in the book he's having dinner with Catherine. He's like, oh, do you love me? Do you love me? Say you love me. Why do you never say you love me? Shut up. Shut up. I found the... His theorem... To be quite far-stretched. Didn't you think? I mean, in the end, it's finally revealed or he finally comes to the conclusion that it can never predict the future and that it can only account for past experiences. So I was like, okay, so that becomes somewhat more believable, but still that you can come up with an equation that can tell you in a very nice graph what your relationship was like was weird. And I mean, I know that there's a whole chapter in the end that is a mathematician explaining how this actually does work, but still, to, still, I, I found it weird. I found it weird. And I mean, even though I finished the novel, and you know, sometimes, you know, there are parallel stories or, you know, there are maybe storyline or story thread within a novel. So for example, you know, like in this novel, there's also all the the thread about how the uh, town um, factory has financial problem and how the mother is trying to solve them, whatever. And I mean, uh, till, till now, I don't see the link between those two. I mean, usually when there's many or multiple story thread in the book, I usually feel like they're either mirrored story or parallel stories or they're supposed to say something about the other stories that they're interconnected in some way. Whereas with this novel, it doesn't feel like it at all. Did I miss it? Do you see a connection between Colin's journey and then the town's journey? I don't see it. I have to say that I liked the reveal that came later in the book that the fact that the that Catherine the ninth the nineteenth and Catherine the first were the same one. I hadn't seen that coming and how I love how it was eventually revealed, so I thought it was a nice surprise. And uh the fact that the <laughs> that T.O.C., the other Colin, was indeed a jerk, was a very rewarding thing to find out. I thought, though, that Hassan took it surprisingly well. He seemed to be quite infatuated, and it sort of turned like turned out, oh, she's cheating on me, over. It's, it's over. Let's not talk about it anymore. It's 
done. Okay, bye. Next move. Let's move along. It's that for me would be sort of like the only slight thing that would seem out of character. I mean, I know that he sort of shrugs off everything and makes light of any situation with humor and it seems that nothing stick to him. So maybe like deep down he was hurt, but he didn't let it show. But still, I was like, mm, really? I don't know. But there you go. So that's what I thought about the book. So did you, and I like the character of Lindsay. I thought she was feisty and great and smart, but I did not like the fact that it was sort of unresolved at the end. You know, like we know that Aston is going to go back to college, but we don't know if Lindsay will indeed leave town and go to college. I would have liked to know that. And we don't know that. And that kind of bugs me. So, yeah. What did you think of the novel? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Where do you think it stands in terms of John Green novel? Is it one of your favorite? Do you think it's one of his best? Is it representative of his writing and style and energy of his other novel? Please let me know in the comments. And you can always come and find me out on Facebook and on Twitter. You can know what I'm reading and therefore know before everybody else what video I'm going to shoot next. Um, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to know any video I will put up in the future. And there you go. Until next time, take care. Bye.